All right. First Samuel chapter 17. And we'll start here in verse number one. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shiko, which belongeth to Judah and pitched between Shiko and Azaka is Ephestami. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on, one, on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am, I, am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. I want to speak for a few moments this evening on facing giants. Let's pray. Our gracious heavenly Father, as we come into your word this evening, as we come into our uh, studies this evening, may we leave here being reminded what Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 says, that nay in all things that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. May we leave here encouraged about facing giants in our life, on facing issues and obstacles, Lord, that in whatever we face in this life, through you, in you, is the strength to yield a victory. We give thanks to you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. It was said that Warren Wearsby said that the Christian life is not a playground, but it's a battleground. And for any of us who've been saved any time at all, we can completely Understand this, every day we wake up, the flesh is at war with the spirit and the spirit is at war with the flesh. Every day we can feel the, the, the strain of this battle in our lives. But there are times as you are serving the Lord, maybe you're in this now, and if you ain't in one now, you're going to come into one or you've experienced this. There are times in this Christian life where you face battles, and it's not just seemingly a normal battle. It does, doesn't seem to be the strain of the, the flesh fighting the spirit and the spirit fighting the flesh. There are times in your Christian life where you are faced with the colossal battle. A giant in the room, something in your spiritual life where you feel like you know it's there. It's hindering you from ever being able to go forward. You recognize its presence, and yet you don't know how you're ever going to yield victory. You've reasoned in your mind that you can move forward in your Christian life without conquering this giant, and it's just not so. Here, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we all love the story of David and Goliath. I mean, we love this idea. Matter of fact, the world loves this idea. 
I read an article for GameStop that was posted in the, uh, in the newspaper for 2021 when GameStop was up against the new age of technology and the headline of the article said, this is a true David and Goliath story. Even more, there was a store down, I guess it was somewhere down in Kentucky, and they just happened to put a Walmart up not far from this mom and pa store. And the headline down there in Kentucky said, this is a true David and Goliath story. Ma and Pa Spencer are still hanging on, saving their store, beating Walmart. We like the idea in our lives where the underdog wins. We like this idea where the, the little guy wins out. And at times we read the David and Goliath story and that's how we like to position ourselves that we're the little guy and we will always win out. And yet in reality, though it is a true statement in David's life, the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17 is much bigger than that. It's much bigger than that altogether. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, God lays out for us how to face giants. Matter of fact, though, before we figure out how to face giants, God lays out to us what giants do in our life. There is the reality that we think that we can just turn away all the children of Israel who would just hide away when Goliath would come down. But that's not an effective Christian life. You can't have victory that way. So what we see here starting in verse number four, uh, we're reminded here about what happens when we face giants. We see the, there's a description of a giant. Verse number four, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Our first lesson on giants that we face in our life is that when we face giants in the Christian life, these are situations that are massive, huge, situations that seem to overshadow us. Goliath was some estimate between six foot six, and, or excuse me, uh, nine foot six and nine foot nine. He was a massive man. His size was so massive that it caused all the children of Israel to hide in fear. And this was a massive problem for the children of Israel. So when we see the first takeaway about giants in our, our, our own personal lives, giants in our lives, uh, it seems to be situations that when we think about it, it causes us to be crippled. It causes us to turn our head away, to, to look away from the situation as if there is no hope at all. And it seems that when we finally build up enough courage to finally face the giant in our lives, it seems that the giant, when we really focus in on him, not only is the problem massive, meaning Goliath was massive, but even more than the problem being massive, it seems to be well fortified. I mean, the situation seems to be well protected. It seems to have himself in a good stronghold. I mean, this is why banks put police officers in the entryway to ward off attackers, right? And this is why when money is transported, it's protected by armored vehicles to, to ward off attackers. Even more, this is why the president has a security team all around him to ward off attackers. And here in verses 5 through 8, we not only see that Goliath was a massive man, but he was a well-protected man. Verses 5 through 8, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron, bearing a shield that went before him. Here it is, this massive giant. 
Not only is he here in your progress, hindering your progress, but when you begin to think about how you can overcome it, you can't get around the fact that it seems so powerful. And any attack you seem to put forward towards it is well protected from success. I mean, this giant had a hundred pounds of armor. And he had a man who went before him who carried the shield for this massive giant. Another problem when we face giants in our own spiritual life, according to verse 8, it says, And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? And ye servants to Saul? Choose for you, uh, uh, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. What we see in verse number eight, giants in your spiritual life, not only do they seem powerful, not only do they seem well protected, uh, but giants in your life attempt to tear down your giants, if that makes any sense at all. But when we think about this, see, we don't really get the full picture until we first go back to 1 Samuel chapter 9. And then we plug it in against this verse 2. Remember, the children of Israel, remember they cried for a king. God, give us a king. We want a king. We want to be like all the other nations. And God gave them exactly what they wanted. He told Samuel, I have a man on the way for you. And when we get the description of this man in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 2, it says, And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. For his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the other people. They had a giant in their life. There was this distinct king that they had. This is what they cried for, a mighty leader, a mighty man to go out before them and lead them. And yet, when he comes down Goliath in his mocking way, this person that Israel cried for, he said, aren't you servants of Saul? Goliath knew where Saul was. He was breaking down this man who was even leading them. Let me tell you something about giants. They will come into your life and make you feel like the people you looked up to in your life can't help you. They will make you feel like the person you prayed that God would give you help to strengthen you is afraid of the same giant that you are. And even more. Verse number 16 says, they keep coming back day after day to taunt you and remind you that you will never defeat them. Verse 16, it says that the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. This is the problem with giants. When they go unchecked, when they go uncountered, when we have giants in our spiritual life that prevent us from making forward progress, it's not ever going to go away. This is not a situation if you don't handle it, it's done and over. The Bible says that for 40 days, Goliath returned to the children of Israel and reminded them, you got a problem. This is what giants do. They remind us that there's an issue in our own life. Day by day, they return to us letting us know there's no going forward. Day by day, they return to us that you cannot have a victory. And the, the thought is so overwhelming that whenever that thought comes, that whenever that feeling shows up, that whenever that situation comes up, we don't reach for the sword. We find ourselves like the rest of Israel in verse number 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Unchecked giants, unchecked giants in our lives, they will overshadow your Christian life. They will stop your forward progress. They will present themselves as fortified before you. They will taunt you every day to make you think that you can't get them out of your camp. And even more, before long, if you leave them there, they will have you sort of afraid. They will have you in a place where you can't go forward. 
We all face things in our own spiritual lives, memories of times past, mistakes that we've made, issues that we have in our own life that Satan tries to pump up in our lives and say, you can never move forward in your spiritual life because of that giant. No matter what you do, you're still that person. No matter what happens in your life, don't forget, Day by day, we wake up wanting to know the Lord. We pray that God will help us, that he'll send the spirit, that it will refresh us in the word. And before long, Satan sends along the giant to remind you. Remember where you were from. Remember, do you really think that this time of study is going to help you? Do you really think you're going to learn anything from the word? Remember, remember, it's been all these years and I'm still here with you. All these years you've been saved, and yet you can remember, fresh as all could be, the sins of your past. No victory. No victory. You're never going to have victory. I love verse 26 of this chapter. David comes on the scene. His dad has sent him as an errand boy and down to his three brothers to deliver food. And when he arrives here on the scene to deliver food, he hears the words of this giant speaking. And when Goliath was done talking, David started talking. Verse number 26, and David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Hallelujah. Someone has arrived on the scene and is ready to speak about this giant. And David, from the outside looking in, has gotten a fresh look on the problem that they are facing. It said, you know, it said, you all know that it's not normal to allow giants to live in your camp. It's not normal to allow someone who's outside of the covenant promises of God bully people who is inside the covenant promises of God. This is not normal behavior at all. It's not normal to have someone come down and mock you when you're banking on God's promises. This is not normal. I mean, we are victors. We are conquerors. What kind of fool would ever arrive here in the camp of the living God and mock the armies of the living God? Perspective here. Goliath thought that he was at war with the armies who served Saul. This is the problem with facing giants. Giants will bring you to a place where it makes you think that your hero is the person who's leading you. I am not your hero. Don't let me be your hero. I will let you down. God is our hero. He's the one who's wrought great victories. Yet here for Goliath, he's brought the children of Israel to a place where their eyes have been distracted from whom they are really serving and brought them to a place that Saul's your hero and he's hiding too. I don't like to admit this here, but I at times feel like I am like this sometimes when I'm battling giants in my own life. Something that's been bothering me for many days. Something that's been mm, keeping me sleepless. And those who come around and, and those who come around me and those who say they love me and those who really care about me and they know that I'm battling something and they say, hey, listen, what's going on? In the moment that they try to encourage me and strengthen me in the Lord, it seems like I lash out. This is what happens here. David begins to strengthen the children of Israel. He said, who is this? Don't you know who we serve? Don't you know that this isn't normal? And look what happens in verse number 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom 
hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see a battle. How many times does this happen to us? When brothers and sisters in the Lord try to encourage us to fight against giants, when they try to refresh us that it's not normal to allow giants to rain havoc in our lives. And what do we end up doing? We end up lashing out against the ones who are closest to us. Eliab lashed out on his brother because his brother brought the valid point that this is not normal. Unfortunately, I will have to tell you that I at times find myself more like a liar than I'd like to mention. When my wife will encourage me and say, it wasn't the worst sermon I ever heard, but you could do better. Uh, I, I at times, like, you know, but the reality is, is that we seem to lash out on people who are trying to encourage us to take on the giant. Eliab says, David, you're so prideful. David, remember, you're sitting here talking about, you know, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's going to defy the armies of the living God? But remember, David, where who'd you leave those few sheep with? Diminished him. You're not a warrior. You're not a fighter. You know nothing about battle. Your job is to keep sheep in the wilderness. Matter of fact, David, by encouraging us to take on this Goliath, the only thing you care about is seeing a fight. And unfortunately, we often respond terrible to people who encourage us to be victors. If you will not conquer giants, they will not only displace you in the camp, but the giant will harm your relationship with those who are closest to you. It's just a fact. David is not swayed by his, this moment with his brother, but will again before Saul say this again in verse 36. Verse number 36, he says, The servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he hath defied the armies of the living God. I hope you see this. Whenever they teach you to study the word of God, they teach you something about redundancy. Redundancy supplies emphasis. When we get into the New Testament, we see truly, truly, I say unto thee, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he might sift you as the wheat. Martha, Martha. And here in this chapter here, we see an emphasis by David to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I hope this brings back to your memory what we've been studying on Sunday mornings in the book of Ephesians. We just went through this. To be uncircumcised is to say that you was outside of God's covenant community. To be uncircumcised was to say that you were without God's power. To be uncircumcised said that you was in the world without God. No relationship and you had no access to power. What David was said on Goliath's best day, he was a giant of a man with a lot of armor and he had a big mouth, but he had no God. This is what he was saying. This word uncircumcised to say he had no strength at all. This was the reality of it all. And by the way, this right here it's the exciting moment even for our own lives as we study the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, what happens when we see in the last chapter, the last part of chapter number two is in Christ, the wall of partition has been torn down. In Christ, there's no longer circumcision or uncircumcision. We are all in Christ. So what David is saying, in order to face giants in our own lives, we must have to realize that the enemies that we face in our Christian life are in opposition to God yet they have not the strength of God. This is great news when facing giants. He says even more, but we have God. 
He said these uncircumcised Philistines. It's almost like when David says these uncircumcised Philistines, it's like a history lesson in two words. Remember, the Philistines don't have no story about the Red Sea. The Philistines don't have no story about the plagues. The Philistines don't have no story about the ark. But remember, the us who are in this covenant community, we have been constantly provided and protected throughout all the ages. And we stand here in Christ because of what he has done, claiming the same victories. In Christ, we can say, my God also parted the Red Sea. My God sent the plagues to Egypt. It was my God, and it is still our God today that faces the giants. I think oftentimes the problem is this. I love that David did this here. He said, the servant slew both the lion and the bear. The servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. You know what the problem is? I think oftentimes when we face giants, we don't give credit where credit is due. When David faced Goliath, when David faced the giant, he pulled out the record book of victories that God had already given him. We oftentimes, God brings us through troubles. He brings us through trials. He brings us through situations, and we don't give him no credit. So when we're finally in opposition to this huge giant, we feel defenseless because we never gave him the credit for the past victories. But if we would just keep a history book and say, you know what? One time I faced a lion, and God delivered me. And one time I faced a bear, and God delivered me. And yes, you arrived here on the scene, giant, but you know what? God will deliver me. Keeping notes about God's victories in our life promotes great strength and faith in him. So when we're facing giants in our lives, when we are facing problems that seem to hunt us, we now sit back like David and say, who is this giant? When I hope when you see a problem, I don't know your problems and you don't know my problems. We all have things that hunt us inside. Things that we probably don't even like to bring up. Things that we don't even share with our spouses at times. But if we don't ever get to a place where we face this issue and say, what is this? Who is this giant that's plaguing my life? If we don't ever face this problem, if we allow the giant to stay in the closets of our mind, if we allow the giant to stay troubling our hearts, what victory do you think you're going to have? We have to address the giants in our life. But we can't, see, Israel was facing the giant on the sides of the giant. David was facing the giant on the sides of our God. Verse 48, I love this. And it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. Look what it says there. And David hasted. And what else did he do? and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. David ran to the problem. You see, David wasn't satisfied that there was a giant in the camp. We should never find it acceptable that there is a giant hunting and wreaking havoc in our own spiritual lives and not want to do something about it. It's not okay. David said, this is not only problematic, but we need to get this done and get it done now. David ran down to meet the giant. And then in verse 51, therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine. He had already hit the Philistine with the stone, but it's not enough. David is handling this giant in his life with uh, exponential timing. Therefore, David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. David said, listen, when you're facing giants in your life, if you'll just get your mind right, 
and get your heart right and pull out the record book about how many times God has delivered you and move in faith. When everybody else is hiding in fear, you're not going to be stumbling and trembling down to the battle. David ran down with confidence. He slew the giant. As a matter of fact, it wasn't enough that the giant went down. He dismembered the giant from his own head to make it uh, be clear to everyone that this giant no longer would be visiting the camp of Israel. Listen. Conquering giants in our life is more than just saying, I'm not going there no more. Conquering giants in our life is putting ourselves in a situation where the problems that we face will no longer be problems. Where the things that haunt us can no longer haunt us. We, we have to take a step forward spiritually because it allows others around us to know what. What was the emphasis to David? What was David's main concern? David's main concern wasn't that he would be a victor. Matter of fact, David's zeal wasn't that he would be promoted. David's zeal was he wanted everyone to know that there is a living God. And when we face giants and battles in our life, when we move forward in faith, when Satan tries to remind you and we of who we were, and we say, and so, <laughs> so, God has done so much more for me in my life. What we do is we take a step, move, a step forward, reminding others around us, there is a living God. That's who they were, but that's not who they are now. That's what they once did, but that's not what they do now. The accusations are actually sweet hymns unto the Lord about what his grace can do in our lives. We must never allow giants in our lives to run our own spiritual status. Status. It is a reminder when you read 1 Samuel chapter 17, Yes, it's a wonderful story. We love comeback stories. We love the underdog winning. But what it really is is a, a testament. When we will put our faith in God, the David's reminder is that those who are outside of the covenant community have no strength. But those who are inside the covenant community, as Ephesians chapter 2 in the last few verses says, we have all the strength. The same help David had is the same hope and help we had. But we have to approach giants, not that I'm booting you out. We have to approach giants with the thought process is that you have to go. You have to get out of my life. Not because you're, so to say, plaguing me, which you need to go because you're plaguing me. But you got to get out of my life so that others can know that there is a living God who's delivered me from all my past. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for all that you've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the victories that we've experienced in our lives. Lord, work in our hearts, refresh our minds, Lord, and work in our hearts and, and bring us to a place, Lord, where we don't let the past victories just slip by. Bring us to a place where we strike a personal record of the great victories that you've brought us through. Lord, may we lay them upon our hearts and lay them upon our minds. May we refresh our hearts with those things daily, reminding ourselves so that when the new giants come, when the new battles come, we're refreshed again and said, you've delivered us from the lion and you've delivered us from the bear and you will deliver me again. Not so that I will be great, but so that all the world will know how great of a God we serve. We give thanks to you for your love, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hymn number 353.